All right, everybody. It's the Addy 84 show live here from our uh, quarantina here in uh, both in our isolated locations in, uh, in Woodburn and the West Newbury, Massachusetts here. We are isolated. We are uh, live on Facebook. We got the new computer going. Adam sees Fenway Park behind me. Is that correct? I, I do. Yeah, you keep you move, you're moving too much though, so you kind of have some flickerish going on, like you're. Uh... I see some legs and then I lose a head. There's an arm lost. Like, yeah. yeah. Well, play with the light a little bit. I, I get, the, I got to adjust the light. And then it doesn't have to help the green screens behind me. If you're watching on Facebook right now, the Eiffel Tower is actually behind me. So. Oh, so, Facebook is Eiffel Tower. And uh, I got Fenway. Gotcha. Yes. Uh, so, you know, I couldn't find any still video of Fenway just to kind of keep it going as like a, like a replay in the back. But, um, you know, it is what it is. But, uh, so we're live. This is episode 128. Hopefully, we only have a handful of these uh, isolated episodes left. I think maybe just a few more. Hopefully, the way things are going. But um, let's start off a few. How are you doing today, good man? I'm doing all right. You know, uh, been watching a lot of television, a lot of a lot of, a lot of uh, movies as usual, and uh, trashy television. Did you watch Too Hot to Handle on Netflix? That did you watch one episode? Nope, we haven't started yet. We're gonna start that. We just caught up to uh, Jersey Shore. We watched the entire um, the summer vacation or family vacation. So I guess it started in August, and uh, we are now in caught up. There's like five more episodes left, so we're basically gonna watch that. So I think we're gonna introduce the uh, show you suggest. What was it called again? Hot and what? Too hot to handle. Too hot to handle. So it's, I think we're gonna start trash. that. Is it good though? It's, it's, it's okay. I mean, honestly, there's nothing. It's better than thinking about all the bullshit going on in the world. I mean, it's trash television. They're all douchebags, right? And like, yeah. you know, they all go to like this, um, this sort of, you know, like your typical, like when you look at the Bachelor, the Bachelor, right? Like by the beach, like this giant compound, you know? Yeah. And like they think they're going there to bang for like a month or, or a couple of weeks, right? And then there's like this device, kind of like an Alexa that monitors like kind of everything they do. It's around. And then they find out that. They can't have sex at all. So they, and there's like a problem. They didn't know this going into it. No, they didn't know that. No. Right. And like they can't have sex. No kissing, no jerking off. Nothing of a sexual nature. And there's like a thousand dollar, a hundred thousand dollar giant pool of money. And every time someone breaks a violation, there's a fine. So at the end of every episode, they sit down and the little device says, like, you know, so and such. Well, they might not say who did it. They'll just say there was a violation of a kiss. That'll be three thousand dollars deducted. And they'll be like, who did it? And then, like, and then it's like Francesca's a hoe for show, man. Francesca's like kissing on purpose to like lose money out of the pool, you know? And like right. Rhonda, she'd be all like, she's kind of hot, but like, she, Rhonda's a bitch, you know? I, are there plants involved, do you think? Or you think everyone's like legit, like trying to get the money? Well, I think the, I think the people who aren't getting girls are trying, are just using that as an excuse. Like, how could you do that? We're supposed to be in this for the money. Cause like the people that were were just kind of like, try, I'm trying to resist. You know, yeah. but like, it, it, it's, it's interesting. It's trash, but it's like, you know, I, I get a kick out of it. It's hard to say what I would do in a situation like that, considering <laughs> the fact, are right, you there for the money? So I wonder what they told the people going into it, what the <laughs> final thing was, you know, I wonder like, I wonder what the, like the hook was to get them there before they dropped the bomb. Like, I think they were told it was just a dating show. Okay. So you're, then you think you have all the sex you want. Oh, your camera's going wild. It's following you around. It kind of turns into the, like a dating show at the kind of at the end of, and it's, they have like do like freaking workshops to like try to make themselves more of a relationship oriented rather than players, right? And like there's this one girl who's fucking dumb as a stomp, Chloe, or as one guy calls her Blowy at one point. Yeah. And um, like she's like dumb as a stomp. She's like the kind of girl that like if, if you had sex unprotected sex with her, tell her to do jumping jacks and she'd like miscarry, right? Or stand upside down, right? So like they have like a workshop. And like she and like they tell where well, they're also just staring at their own vaginas, like in mirrors, like it's beautiful, it's so beautiful. And then like all of a sudden she comes down with like female empowerment. She's like, I have to learn to tell men that like they should earn this. And then all of a sudden she thinks she's smart, and she's not. And, well, it's just <laughs> funny. Chloe's, Chloe that they call Blowy, that was my nickname in high school. So I mean, we have a lot in common, I guess. Me and this Chloe. I'm not sure if you'd want that nickname. What do the broad, broads look like? Are they any good looking? Or are they kind of oh, yeah. like, you know? Yeah, I will say, yeah. Yeah, they're pretty so, good looking. So I think I would know what I would do is, you know, if, if I could had a connection with one of them, I think. 
say like we were going to hit it off and like we really wanted to do the whole nasty nasty. I think what I would do is is go to her and be like, listen, why don't me and you just hold out as long as possible? We'll split the money and we'll bang like you know, wild rabbits when this is all over with, you know? Well, I would get to a point where like if I would try to start off personally, like I try to start off legit, like, all right, I'll try it for the money here. But then the more that prize pool keeps going down, like hundred thousand, if it hit like below 50, I'd be like, fuck it. I'm just going to do what the fuck I want. Like no one else is taking this seriously. Like screw it. You know, who cares at this point? But yeah. Oh, okay. So there's a giant pool. So every time someone violates, it violates the entire pool. Yes. Yeah. So some, so, so some fucker could just be fucking with you the entire time and just try to knock this thing down as fast as possible. Yeah, be a dick. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. So I guess yeah, you're right. So if it gets down to a point where it's barely anything left in there, I'm just going to say, fuck it. And, you know, be a wild animal. You know what I mean? Do whatever I need to do. Yeah, you don't know until the end how it's supposed to be divided up. Like, they don't really say that. I feel like towards the end, they were just kind of going with the flow. Like, how the hell do we do this? Yeah. <laughs> it's it's trash television. It really is. And um, So what episode is it on to now that you're on to? Or what, what are they I finished it. How many episodes? Eight. Eight episodes. Oh, all right. So it's a quick watch. They were like an hour out piece or something like that? Yeah, and like some some new people come in too with the, with the, with the idea that they want to sabotage the whole thing. But so it doesn't, it doesn't. You watch the end at this point, so you know what happens. Mm-hmm. Okay. All oh. right. So next week, this is going to be my weekend project. I'm going to watch this, and then we can talk about it next week. It's fucking trash. It's like, a, it's a lot of these guys just fucking tool bags. It's like, you'll did see. You, yeah. What happened to it? Did you watch Jersey Shore at all? I used to. I didn't watch the newer ones, though. I kind of tried to, and I was like, this is worn off on me. It kind of just died. Yeah, I, I used to be religious. I used to when it first came out, the first few years I watched it. Then it went a period yeah. of time where I didn't watch it at all, and it wasn't until um, last spring, I think it was, they had the the, the Pauly D Vinny Dayton show that uh, me and the wife got really into. It was called like yeah, uh, I, I something of love, or something like that. Um, we watched that religiously. We watched it every week, and then. Um, so then some of vacation, I guess, came out, started in August. So it started a few months after that happened. But we never watched it. We were like, whatever. So now it's what, April. It's been six months since it's came. It's come out. Um, so we just we literally took the entire last weekend. We watched uh, 21 episodes at 42 minutes apiece. And, well, they still uh, have having kids and shit. Like, it's not, it just changes the dynamic of it all. It's like, I don't know. A little it's bit. Forced. There's still yeah. a little drama going on there. Um, there's still some shenanigans going on there. Um, but I mean, it is what it is. It's a uh, trashy reality TV for anyone's pleasure watching it. Uh, I enjoyed it. I didn't mind it one bit. I, uh, I'm looking forward to tomorrow when they have episode 22. It's got to be nearing to the end. I think it's got to be pretty much about to wrap up, I guess. But I just read they signed uh, Vinny and Polly up for this uh, prank. You no, know, like we, they you know like uh, Ashton Cooker had, Kushner had that, that prank show. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Punk, I guess, right? The, uh, Vinny and uh, Paulie D are going to be doing their own version of uh, punk, I guess. That's... I hope a prank turns on them and one of them ends up dead. I fucking hate them. <laughs> like, a fucking, like a double-decker Vegas bus runs them over by mistake. <laughs> they spent a lot of time in Vegas, which has been the whole entire episode, is, the season of the, well, the series has been getting me very, very excited about going to Vegas as soon as all this quarantine's over. I'm going to live my best life in Vegas like a wild animal, you know? Uh, what I find always hilarious about these kind of shows where like people are dating and banging and they're like, I love you. And like, I, I think that what happens is remember you're in an environment that's almost like a utopia. You're getting to go on these arranged dates. You're getting to go on all this shit like boat rides and like these beautiful things. Right. But it's yeah. not. So what you, what you're feeling of love is real, but you're put, being put in these instances that aren't reality. So it's like, if you take that all out, are you really going to survive this? You know what I mean? If you're hanging out on your couch all the time, like most people, are you going to survive this? No, you're not. You know, you're just blinded by all the fun stuff you're doing, making you love that person more. But it's, it's, like, not real. It's, like, it's like meeting a chick on spring break. You know, I've made that mistake yeah. amounts of times. Perfect. Right? I mean, when I used to travel a lot, same thing. I used to meet yeah. people. And the, the emotions you're feeling are very real. But you're you're delusional in thinking that it's actually going to amount to something because you're in a certain environment that brings that out. You know. I met this broad in spring break 2004 from Connecticut, right? You probably heard the story a hundred times. She's the one that stabbed me. She threw me out of a moving vehicle. She threw scolding hot coffee over Joe's uh, double backs, a bright brand new white sweater. Have you thrown out of a couple cars? 
Oh, yeah. I've been throwing out at least three by two different <laughs> girls for that matter. Yeah, I was going to say. Yeah, I know. I know when you're talking about that. Yeah. but One time, I well, point out, oh, but it's this. I've been thrown out of a car three times by two different girls. I was with a girl who threw, tried to throw herself out of a car that I was driving at the point of time. Then I pulled over and left her at the Dunkin' Donuts because she was crazy. You know which one that is. Yeah, I never met her. You said I did, but I never did. Um, you, you crossed paths. I don't think it was ever a formal. I think she was leaving as you were coming or vice versa. I don't think it was a, a situation in which uh, you guys were able to uh, have a, a conversation with. Yeah, but maybe. um, the best part about her trying to throw herself out of the car was I, I, I brought her back to her vehicle where it was. And I go, well, I guess you're on your own. And she ran over to uh, Eric Danger Powers' vehicle while he was getting a blowy and started banging on the window and interrupted his blow chops, which is absolutely hilarious. So, best story. How, did, uh, how did she get back, though? Did you eventually just swing around and pick her up after you cooled down? Or... Well, I brought her, I, yeah, I, I left her at the Dunkin' Donuts. I, I sat there, we talked through the window, and then I put her back in the car. And I brought her back to her car, which was at the Dunkin'. It was at was uh, at the uh, Margaritas. I just brought her back there and said, "All right, you're on your own." So, and that was the last time I think I spoke to her. After that, you know, that was many moons ago. I mean, we're we're it's approaching. Uh, wow, that's approaching five years. Do you believe that? Jesus Christ, yeah. It's, not fucking crazy. it's four and a half years ago that happened. It was November of 2015. It's just been crazy, man. That's that's crazy. She was a cray cray. Well, yeah, the oh, girl talking was, about spring break. The girl that's built yeah. coffee on Jersey. Yeah, so I met her. In, I met her at a, a gas station in Fort Myers, Florida. Um, <laughs> <where I> was, <laughs> right off the bat. <laughs> oh yeah. So I was I was a double back and his brother and uh, this guy Adam. They used to the, the other Adam before you. Um, he used to play in my band back in high school. So we were we were driving in my Jeep. We had my Jeep down in Florida, roof off and all that. And uh, we, we drove by the gas station on my way, and we go, oh, shit, there's four chicks over there. So we had this plan where I drove my Jeep over while they were in the gas station. They were, they were buying wine or beer or something like that. So I popped the hood of my Jeep to pretend it was like, you know, I was doing work on it, and then called the girls over and had a conversation with them. I had no idea how, how this all worked. So they ended up talking to us, and I'm like, oh, they ended up, we're staying at the hotel across the street from the gas station. So we picked them up, and we drove them over to the hotel, and we hung out. And then... um. We hung out all night, and then the next day we called him up on our way back from the beach, and we started hanging out. Next thing you know it, on our way home from Florida, I was stopping in Connecticut to hang out with this broad with uh, the other Adam. Double back, and his brother took off. They wanted no part of this. And, uh, yeah, we dated for two years. That was that was a fun adventure. She was cray-cray. Like, cray-cray to the cray-cray. What, uh, what else have you been watching? Mm-hmm. So we... Uh, so th- I just finished, uh, so I finished, I, I watched McMillions. I think we talked about that. Tiger King finished that. Um, we were watching Southern Charm. You ever watch that show? I heard of it. No, you told me about it last week, though. Yeah. We were watching it until Comcast caught on to us watching it on demand and started wanting to charge, charge us for uh, episodes to watch. Really? Huh. But yeah, so we stopped watching that because she was going to pay. It was like, it's like $3 an episode. I go, are you high? I go, it'll cost you $60 to watch. It's like, oh, no, it'll eventually be free. It'll eventually be on some kind of, you know, platform at which, you know what I mean? Yeah. But, well, um, so, yeah. Well, since this whole thing started, I, uh, I've been writing down every movie I've watched, right? And, and I have a rule, though. Like, it has to be something I've either never seen or haven't seen in about 15 plus years. And right now I'm at 43 movies. That's funny you said that. I am doing the exact same thing. Every oh, night we geez. watch a movie. I, and this is just movies in general, even if I've seen it or haven't seen it. Some movies, I've been trying to um, see movies I have never seen before. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. Yeah. So a couple, a couple movies such as uh, um, Delma and Louise, never seen that before, so I watched that. Um, uh, Bull, Thur- Bull Durham, never watched that before, seen that one. These are the, and they, Some of these movies are really good. So, yeah, like I watched Taxi Driver for the first time the other day on Netflix. Taxi Driver is a classic. Oh yeah, oh yeah. It's <laughs> it, it's it's a good thing to do. You can catch up on a lot of movies. I I found that like um, I'm doing exactly what you're doing. I mean, it makes sense. I mean, it's, you might as well do something constructive for your time, right? Yeah. Uh, I did watch a few little gems in here. Um, I did watch um, there was two movies I watched on Netflix. One of them called Snowpiercer was really really good. Pretty violent. Really good though. 
Okay. Um, another movie I watched, I was pissed off. I yelled at my television because I had nothing else to yell at. But there's a movie it did really well at the box office. So I'm like, all right, this movie did well. It's 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 called It Comes at Night, right? And now, you, I was in the mood for a specific kind of movie. And when you see a title called It Comes at Night, Artie, what do you expect to happen? I'm thinking of porn. I'm thinking someone's coming at night. No, oh, this is Netflix, man. This isn't this isn't Pornhub. All right, it comes at night. You expect like, something to come attack at night, correct? Like a monster, or like yeah, like a demon or a ghost of some yeah, sort. Yeah, something. You expect something sinister. It comes at night. Well, yeah. fucking spoiler alert. Nothing fucking comes at night. Everybody nothing. is just paranoid that someone. It's like in a post-apocalyptic world. There's a virus that's that's killing people, and everybody in this house is just paranoid. That someone's gonna turn on the other person and kill them, but in the end, no, nothing, nothing comes at night. It just they just have fucking dreams and think someone else is gonna kill them. Nothing fucking happens. It was so pet pissed. It wasn't a bad movie. It's just not what I expected. It was false advertising. It's horrible. Better. So not, did anything come a day? That is the question for you right there. Nothing came during the day. Oh, not really. I mean, there was some shit that happens and stuff, but like nothing. It's not as advertised. It makes it even the trailer. Makes it seem like a creature feature, like something's coming at night or something's attacking, and it's yeah. nothing, nothing. It's all just phobia, and people paranoid. Interesting. Bullshit. Well, that sounds like a fucking waste of time. Yeah, it, it wasn't a bad movie. It, it was suspenseful, but like it wasn't what I wanted at that time to watch. Yeah, that's that's what I mean. You know, it wasn't. So that pissed me off. Really. Bad. Well, that's the thing too. Like a lot of times, like I want to try a new movie. And, like, I, I hear that it's a classic or it's a good movie or whatever, yada, yada, yada. But, like, I only have so much time. Like, I want to watch a movie that I know I'm going to enjoy. You know what I mean? It's like going to a restaurant and you're starving. You don't want to try something you haven't tried before because you're afraid of how you're going to, like, like it if you're hungry. You know what I mean? But you could look at it in this way, too. Right now you do have the time to waste. So if it does suck, well, no harm wasted because we have nothing but time to waste. You know? Yeah. If you roll the dice. You could look at it that way. I couldn't get into Raging Bull. I was watching Raging Bull too, and I was like, eh, like, eh. It was fine, just kind of dated, you know. So like one movie that I was like told my entire life was supposed to be like a classic. If I like, uh, you know, gangster movies, Italian movies, and stuff like that, was The Bronx Tale. And I went until about three years ago, the first time I ever seen that movie. Yeah. And I gotta tell you. I don't, and I didn't really enjoy it because I like when Robert De Niro is a bad Italian mobster. I don't like when he plays the good. He does, it's almost I've seen so many movies where he plays like the bad guy that like my stereotypical idea of Robert De Niro in the movie is a bad guy. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And in He's Bronx, a creepy you know, taxi driver. I see. I never seen Taxi. I gotta see that. But in Bronx, yeah, Tale, guy, he plays like the the dad of the kid. You know, like yeah. Them to do well and not do anything bad and all this yada 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 bullshit. So it took me out of it. I couldn't really get uh, you know emotionally involved into it. You know. Yeah, I uh, I also watched that new Ben Affleck movie, The Way Back. He plays a coach. Yes. Um, he plays a basketball coach. It just came out not that long ago. Um, and he's like, it wasn't bad, but it was like, how many cliches could you knock out in one movie it's like they're trying to pump, pump them all in it's like okay he's an alcoholic okay his kid is dead okay his marriage failed okay the team sucks when he first becomes coach it's like all of these things just crammed in there it was entertaining i didn't mind it but it was no new ground it was almost like his personal life with alcoholism was thrown into this movie to try to cope that's what it sounds like. He's a, yeah, he's like an alcoholic in real life, or he was at some point, right? Wasn't he? Yeah, yeah, he's got issues. Yeah. What movie actually? When you mentioned Ben Affleck, which is pretty ironic, because one movie I want to watch, I think I might try to. It's on demand. Um, is uh, Forces of Nature from 1999, Ben Affleck and uh, Sandra Bullock. Do you remember that movie? I, the name sound, sounds familiar. Let me see. Forces of Nature. Um, I don't think I ever seen it. The only reason I want to see it is there's a significant scene where they're at South of the Border down in like uh, North and South Carolina. Yeah, this isn't a movie I'd watch, but if, if it's just a scene, look for the scene. I'm sure it's on YouTube. Yeah, it's a few scenes. It's like uh, it, it, well, it has they actually spend a little bit of the movie there, which is pretty ironic. Um, okay. So it, it's basically about this guy, Ben Affleck, who has to get down to Savannah to get married. And he's stuck in New York City because of a something of a, of a, of a the engine of the plane blows up or something like that. 
So he's stuck to, and he has to try to get back down to Savannah. But then all of a sudden a hurricane comes, a force of nature, if you will. Uh, is she the force of nature, though? Well, perhaps. Sandra Bullock now is now <laughs> he becomes friends with, who's kind of like the opposite of his fiance. And then oh. she's Savannah, too. And the whole movie basically is them going down to Savannah. And I believe at the end, spoiler alert for a movie that came out 21 years ago, I That's believe awesome. they get together. <laughs> I don't know for a fact, but I'm assuming that Ben Affleck dumps the wife and gets of Sandra Bullock. That is my assumption of this movie. Yeah, they all you kind of usually go that way. So that's a good. Uh, I'd say it's a very good guess. Yeah. yeah. Um, I also started watching because I, I want to do a video on Die Hard, the Die Hard series, mm-hmm. and I, Die Hard from from glory to garbage. Because there are five of those, believe it or not, there are five Die Hard movies. Um, and I think that's everybody sweet. remembers one the most, obviously uh, the third one that has Samuel Jackson in it. And after that, it was- live free, die harder. And what's the fifth? Um, on. Live, for, uh, live free or die hard. That's the one with Justin Long, the cyber hacking one. But, yeah, but then the fifth one is a good day to die hard. I don't think I've ever seen that. It's horrible. It's fucking horrible. Um, I'm not, I was surprised sure. at Die Hard 2 and how much I enjoyed it because I hadn't watched that in a long time. And I'm like, how come nobody talks about Die Hard 2 anymore? Usually it's Die Hard and Die Hard with a Vengeance that people talk about. And I realized it's because Die Hard 2, nobody wants to see planes blowing up anymore with people in them. So I think <laughs> it's kind yeah. of been stricken, and you don't see it on syndication anymore, and that's why. But Die Hard 2 is fucking awesome. Yeah, it's, it's the whole one that takes place at the airport and all that stuff, right? It's yeah. like, and Die Hard 3 is the one where he has to uh, walk the streets of the Bronx with the sign of, like, I hate N-word or something like that, and... Yeah, he's with he Samuel Jackson is solving like kind of puzzles and shit, and like yep. the bad guy p- turns out to be the brother of the guy from the first movie. Exactly. The yeah. Yeah. The first yeah. one was the skyscraper on uh, Christmas Eve or something like that, right? That was gonna blow up. Look at Tower. Look at Tower Plaza. Yeah. I mean, I gotta tell you, I would say Bruce Willis is probably my favorite of the action people. I like him better than um. The no, what's his face? Oh, movie. Ooh. Rocky. Uh, uh, Oh, yeah. I don't like Stallone. I'm more of a Schwarzenegger guy. Uh, Willis what? didn't really have anything else, though. I mean, he had... They tried to make him an action star, but, like, Die Hard was all he had. He really didn't have much of anything else in terms of the big... I feel like he's been in some other action movies. I'm just, I just yeah, but, like, none have ever come close to um, Die Hard. Um, no, but... no. Die Hard was definitely... You know, his pinnacle. I remember watching him on Moonlight. You ever watch that TV show back in the uh, in the 80s? Yeah, and yeah, it's funny you mention that. There's a show on, there was a show on Netflix called The Movies That Made Us, and yep. one of them is Die Hard. And when they, they casted Bruce Willis, a lot of people were like, what the hell? You got the guy from Moonlighting? Like, yeah, what? yeah. Um, let me see. Oh, yeah, okay, so Die Hard, yeah. That's right, he was in Pulp Fiction, but he didn't have a big role. Um, the Sixth Sense, okay, but that's not an action movie, but it's a good movie. Yep. Um, Fifth Element, action sci-fi. Okay. Yeah. Oh, Armageddon. Armageddon. That's thinking of Armageddon. Right. Yeah. With with who who else but Ben Affleck? Ben Affleck. What's talking about? Yes. And then ben he kind of mailed it in. And then well, Sin City was okay. Uh, yeah. And then after that though, he just kind of mailed it in for paychecks. Oh, look who's talking. <laughs> he was in which. Oh, I didn't know that. Forget about that. Mind me real quick. I'm just wiping the uh, desk real quick. In a problem. You're just tuning in. I uh, had a giant glass of wine before this uh, show started that I spilt over my desk, over where the new computer is. It's uh, so I'm just wiping it up real quick. Don't mind me. No problem, sir. I'm just drinking my my lemon water. No boost. No boost tonight. Um, I had a few pints earlier, but I'm just trying to cut back, too. It, it, drinking gets expensive, too, and it's just like, I drink enough, and I'm not working out, so drinking right now just makes it even worse. <laughs> yeah. I was watching this, uh, reading this thing online. It said, uh, majority of Americans who are working from home are drinking while they're working during the day. No. <laughs> That's what I said. I go, no kidding, really? No. Sure. Everything going good at work? Yeah, it's uh, I have, I'm actually going back to the office on uh, next week. This is my last week working from home. Yeah, I'm gonna give them a call next next week. 
Uh, yeah. To- yeah, <laughs> still busy. Still stuff to do, which is good. So, I know. It's kind of waiting for this whole shit to, you know, blow over. I was reading something today that said uh, there's a potential. I think Sue brought this up in some article that someone's projecting that Disney World might not even open until 2021. I saw something like that. Um, Disney World 2020. Or something like that, or some kind of economical, uh, you know, magazine of some sort was uh, making a prediction. Based it's on it's on take, yeah. One analyst predicts it may not open until 2021. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, don't, I don't know how much I buy that. You know what I mean? It's a, it's a multi-billion dollar business there. They, they're not going to just stall. You know what I mean? Yeah, they're going to take a huge hit. You know, unless Disney's using this time, which they probably are, to do uh, maintenance, repairs, updates, and all that shit to the park, since it's closed, it's a good time to do it. And now you don't have to do it at night. You can do it 24 hours a day, you know? Yeah. Even when they reopen, though, they're going to take a serious hit because then people are going to be like, should I go, should I not? Like, the economy, jobs, like, everything's got to build up again, you know? So Everything's going to take a hit. Everything's going to take a hit because people aren't going to go to restaurants. People aren't going to go to movie theaters. People aren't going to go to places where you have to be. There will be a few people that will, but majority of people are going to be like, yeah, I don't know if I want to go to the movie theaters today. I don't know if I want to be sitting next to some guy at a baseball game. You know what I mean? Like, I don't, I don't know how much I want to give time to, for all this to kind of, you know, settle in. You know what I mean? Yeah, most people are saving money too now. Everyone's in lockdown because they don't know what the hell is going to happen with their jobs. You know? Oh, yeah, that's true. I mean, you know, it's taking forever for unemployment to get dealt to people and, did you uh, happen? Did you get a stimulus, or did you? Uh, oh, you say you don't do it. You have to wait for the check, right? Because you don't do well, anything. I wait for the check. Yeah. So apparently, I do too, because the even though they had my information, because I had to pay a tax, and then I received a refund for another tax. Because I had to pay a tax, I got put into the write you a check uh, pile. Apparently. But I don't know that for a fact, because every day I go on the IRS website to figure out what the fuck is happening, they don't have any information for me. So, should be getting what? it around 5:15. Be getting a check. So, five May 15th, you say? Around there, yeah. That's what they're yeah. saying, probably. Yeah. So I mean, I mean, it's better than nothing, I guess. But uh, you know, the wife got hers, you know. So hopefully she buys me something nice. You know, what I mean, that's the idea. Yeah. So how are you feeling about the Gronk trade? Well, I mean, when you look at it this way, right? There's a couple of ways you're gonna look at it. The guy wasn't gonna play for the Patriots, anyways, right? They weren't going to pay him to play for the Patriots. They're going to pay him $10 million, right? Yeah. So basically, Belichick got a fourth-round pick for a retired player. So he pretty much got a fourth-round pick for nothing. Yeah. And now, someone posted something today. The draft tomorrow, you know, into the weekend, doesn't. It's not, they don't have crazy picks. It's nothing too special. Um, But next year, did you see what they have next year? They have, like, two ones, two twos, three threes. Like four fours, two fives, and two. They have so many picks next year, and they'll have a hundred million dollars in payroll that they have they can use. Isn't that fucking crazy? That is crazy. So you yeah. think this year is pretty much like, all right, let's see what we can do with the guys we have. I mean, and granted, you got to look at it this way too. There's been quarter. There's been teams that have won. I'm not gonna say they win the Super Bowl, but we're going on a limb here. The most, there are teams out there that have won Super Bowls with crappy quarterbacks and really good defenses. More like more more times than having a really good, uh, you know, quarterback and a bad defense, right? I mean, just look at the Flacco years. Just look at, um, I mean, pretty much those two Giants Super Bowls. Most of those are defense. Um, you know, there's a look at the when the um, Tampa won the first time in '03. That was all defense. They didn't have any offense. So, in theory, the, the Pats still have a decent defense, right? So, you could put Joe Smo as quarterback, you know, go 10-6, and six, make the playoffs, you know, and have a chance, you know, a better chance than having no defense and having, like, you know, a star quarterback. How many teams have these star quarterbacks but don't go anywhere, you know? But, I mean, look yeah, at that. You, you know? Yeah, you still have to have a decent enough quarterback, though. I mean, it's going to – it's the law of average. You're not going to win it with a nobody up there. I mean, I don't expect the Patriots for a couple years to do much. And they'll make the playoffs, yeah. I mean, but you know, they need like any other team. You're gonna have to rebuild. It's just how short that rebuilding process might be. You know what I mean for them? Um, and I think I think they have a good chance of you know you know having an average season next year. Like you said, make the playoffs. Don't do anything too spectacular. Kind of you know move some pieces around, see what they could do, see what people's skill levels are. You know, 
And then uh, next year, when they have all those fucking draft picks for the 2021 draft, I mean, you can put yourself in a good situation where you can box up a few, you know, first round draft picks to get get really, really high in the draft, you know, to get that quarterback you want or get that player you want or make a trade for someone you want. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I think potentially, you know, yeah. All right. So you lose Brady. You knew that was going to happen. You lose Gronk. You got you. You didn't, you didn't even expect Gronk to be here. So losing him is not really losing him. You know what I mean? You didn't expect him to come back. Yeah, and, no, they didn't. Yeah, and I, I think he is. Uh, he is. You got to remember, the guy hasn't completed a season in his career without being hurt, right? He's, he's an old back now. Now. Yeah. yeah, he's out. He's been out a year. He so it's and now he's going to a program which is very lackluster, meaning they're not as strict. They can do pretty much anything you want. So there's not as. So he, now he's going to. It's almost like going to like uh, you know summer camp, you know, down there in Tampa. So, yeah. uh, you know, th- does he do well? I'm sure he will. Uh, but I- I'm very, very curious to see how that team does because, yes, they have pretty much the same team they had last year, but they only went 9-10 and 10 that last year. I mean, 9-6 uh, and oh, six last year. No, now they go last year. 9-7 and seven last year with Watson, right? So what's Brady get you? Three more wins maybe? Do they go 12-4 yeah. and four maybe? Okay. But – one thing you want to realize in that division is this is Drew Brees' last year. So it's going to be the Saints are going to be a tough team. You got to play twice a year. Um, you also have, uh, uh, what's his face? Went to uh, Carolina. Um, uh, quarterback, he was the backup for Bridgewater. Bridgewater went to Carolina. So you got to deal with. That team, which is not necessarily a bad team, and who's the other team in that division? Atlanta. You got the uh, Falcons. So I mean, de- going that division is significantly hotter than the AFC East when you look at it on paper. You know, yeah. the AFC East, you had the Bills, who were your biggest threat, right? Who you know, who actually may win the division this year, to be honest with you, but. You really, you never had to worry about Miami doing any, like, you know, winning, you know, beating you and or the Jets, you know. I mean, Brady has the deal of significant, uh, you know, teams this year. Um, so it's not like a walk in the park. It's not like you're going down to Tampa and everything's just going to be handed to you and you're going to have this fucking beautiful, uh, you know, team and, you know, run, you know, doing something great for Tampa. It, it's basically like putting all your eggs in one basket. It's like the Dodgers have done for years. Buy all these high-end players and make a run for it. You have, they basically have one year. They have one year to do this. So, yeah. yeah, I mean, like I was saying yesterday in the text, like they've already kind of, you know, for them it's a win regardless because, you know, like for most, pathet- most pathetic attendance in the all of NFL, uh, that's going to fill your stands right there. You know what I mean? And I wonder if Gronk sees this as like, because, I mean, isn't Florida, like, his party ground? That's where he parties. Like, well, that's his, his, his mother lives in Naples. He has a house in that area. Um, you know, he's from Buffalo, but, you know, he, he spends a very much. I was on a couple flights of ground coming back from Florida, you know, a couple of years ago. He spends a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of time in Florida. And he was probably, I think he was living in Florida before he came out of retirement, to quite honest with you. Yeah, so, pretty sure he was, yeah. It's, uh, it's one of those things where it's like, for him, it's just, you know, if I can get $10 more million dollars, you know what they owe him. They're going to give him the 10 million and uh, you know, it's better than nothing. Obviously the WWE uh, thing doesn't seem like it's picking up very much. It doesn't seem very entertaining. He doesn't seem to really have the charisma as a WWE wrestler. Um, and the movie career absolutely is at dead end. So he's looking at himself right now, making absolutely no money, you know? So, you know, he might as well That's go lead business. <laughs> I guess so. But how, how is he, how much does he have into that business? Or he's just, a I, have no idea. I mean, so, like, in reality, he's not making much money compared to what he was playing football. So I could see why he wants to come back. He wants to go back. He wants to uh, cash in that probably one last time because if he does play after next year, it will be a matter of low money, you know, getting passed around to some crap team somewhere. Or he's going to be a free agent at the end of the year. So, you know, does Tampa give him the money? Probably not. I mean, Tampa still has O.J. Howard, right? The other um... – As of now, they do. But there's yeah. been rumors that they're trying to trade him. So you really don't know what's going to go on down there. But I, I see what you're saying. Tampa's just putting all their eggs in one basket for one fucking hurrah to see what they can do. You know what I mean? I mean, why not? If you can do it, you can do it. Because I don't really, you know, Tom Brady signed for two years, but we'll see how he does this year. If it's a terrible season, does he come back for that last year? He may not. 
Does he get injured? Does he get hurt? You know, does he have a great season in the comeback? Who knows? We nothing. We will, we will not know until kickoff in uh, the week after of, uh, Labor Day in September this year. We'll finally figure out what the fuck is going on. All I know I, is I said my prediction, and I will stick to this. I think Brady is going to come out guns blazing, come off uh, come off really really strong, do really good, and then he's he's just going to start tapering off halfway through the season. It's just yeah. age is going to catch up with him and. Remember now, he's got to work hard. He's got to go to OTAs now. He has to get familiar with their system. He's going to have to work harder at this. But I think his his adrenaline is going to be so high that he's actually going to be really, really good the first couple games. He's gonna, but he's not going to be able to maintain. I don't see it. No Do you imagine if there's no season this year? Oh, God. I mean, if this, uh, it, I mean it's, a, it's a very good possibility that it could just come down to where, you know, all these teams, all the sports are going like, listen – it's it, we should just let it sit out. We should give it till, you know, give it a full year. Who knows? I don't know how they're going it, to it's I mean, I'm, I'm just speculating right now, but there is a possibility where it, what happens if the season goes, comes and goes, right? What happens? I know, right? I don't know what's in their deal. It's, I don't think it's like baseball where, uh, you know, the contracts up, it's up. It doesn't get a rollover to the next year. I think football might, I don't know though. I don't know what their, their contracts look like. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, who knows? I mean, I mean, it's a good possibility where shenanigans can happen that could, you know, really affect. Well, who knew? Say, say all this shit goes away, and then September, October, this shit comes back, right? And we're back in the same situation we were in in March, and uh, you know, late February, and now all of a sudden they have to close the season now and stop football in the middle of the fucking middle of the season, like they did all the other sports. I mean, that's a possibility that could happen too. I mean, real. Yeah, it is. I was saying in text yesterday. I said. Um, like, you know what, if, if the Tampa Bay is going to get all gun happy with all, you know, if, if, if Belichick can get a th- third round pick for Julian Edelman, do it, do it. Yeah. I mean, this is the time to do it. I think you're right. I agree. Like how old's Edelman now? He's like, what? 33, 30, um, a uh, year younger than me. He's, yeah. So he's maybe no two years. He was born 86, I think. So, you know, he's, yeah, he's 34 years old. I mean, I receive a 34 who runs cross routes. Fucking straight. If you can get a third round pick for him, do it. I agree. Oh, I, agree. I, I think uh, I, I wouldn't be surprised too if they dangle him out there, you know. And they also talked about uh, Tooney. I guess the 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 guy that they franchised, the, he might be on the trading block too. So uh, I think they're going to clear out about a hundred million dollars worth of cap. Yeah. And I, they're going to be able to do um, some damage next year. I think they're going to be able to sign some free agents. They're going to have room to sign big plays. They're going to have a lot, a lot, a lot of draft picks. So. What happens this year? Is this going to be, I think, an evaluation year for the players they have to figure out what they're worth, if they have any, what their ceiling is, and what possibly they could do? And then uh, 2021 is now a season oh, week. So, yeah. uh, a month from today, exactly today, Julian Edelman will be 34. So, okay. Yeah. So, well, there you go. So, you see, so now the seasons are starting, and we haven't started. Um, baseball, you see, with the Red Sox, got one punishment. That's it. You see that? <laughs> the, the instant replay. The replay guy got suspended. Replay got suspended, and they lost the second round draft pick, which means nothing in baseball. So, um, I guess. <laughs> I think, yeah, Cora was already out. So, I mean, but I mean, nothing says he can't be the coach next year. So. Well, they were saying the argument was that like it wasn't as what they did obviously was not as well orchestrated as what the Astros did, so it couldn't be as severe as theirs, you know? Yeah, no, it makes sense. I mean, I mean, it just it, it the Red Sox really were lucky for this one because all the talk and all the uh, the attention has been gone for the uh, this so the suspension was going to be and stuff, and now it kind of just goes away. We'll forget about it by the time baseball. Starts. Stats and uh, 2021 Alex Cora will be the manager for the Boston Red Sox and everything will continue as normal. Uh, the Red Sox, another team, 2021 are going to have a lot of money on their fucking for to spend. You see that too. I mean, they get because of all the money they just dropped. Um, 2021 is going to be a big year. I know we're looking a year ahead, but we might as well because sports aren't going on right now. <coughs> 2021, huge year for the Red Sox and huge year for the Patriots because they're going to have a lot of money to use to spend. So that is something to look forward to. I kind of wish we could just fast forward to the 2021 season and, uh, you know, these two wasted seasons in which the Red Sox and Patriots are going to be playing just go away and we don't have to worry about it, you know? I'm looking at their schedule right now, 
and the Red Sox schedule. They should Toronto should be playing at Fenway right now tonight. Uh, but it doesn't even say canceled. It says postponed. Yeah. No, it, it's it's canceled. <laughs> like uh, you're not. There's no way you're gonna make up all of these games. Like no, why don't you switch that? The idea was they postpone them because the idea is say this they didn't say this stuff say we could play May first right they were just gonna make up the entire month of April of double headers for the rest of the season, Oof. which sucks it's terrible, Oof. and you gotta remember too there's a lot of teams they're playing in the beginning of the season where they only play once for the year, like uh, for example they're only in Texas playing the Rangers once in May, so to in order to make up those games it. it I was telling Sue the other night, I go, basically what they're going to have to do is throw away the schedule that there is right now and pretty much make a new schedule, essentially, and kind of like, you know, figure out, you play all your teams in your division, you play, you figure out a way to make a schedule work so in which that you get rid of the league for the year, just so you can have a nice even base so you can get to a yeah. playoff situation, you know what I mean? They have to chop it down, for real. Um, yeah. You have to do something because you're not playing 162 games this year. I can guarantee that. You know, you'd be lucky if 80 off. You know, in the beginning of the, in the end of the season. But I feel more bad for the Bruins though. I mean, they had, they were rolling. You know, who knows what's going to happen there? Well, remember if they cancel the season, they're the automatic Stanley Cup champions because of the rule book. That sucks though. I wouldn't want that. That's not. I mean, I mean, it's it's. If I was on that team, I wouldn't feel any glory for it though. If no. I got it, you know. <laughs> It's just something on paper, I guess, at that point. You know what I mean? It's just yeah. what it is. I mean, I mean, in reality, yes, I know it doesn't count as much as playing all four, you know, you know, rounds and, you know, fucking. But you, you were the best team in hockey by a lot going into it, too. You know what I mean? So, I mean, when you look at it that way, too, they were the best team when it's all ended. So, yeah, yeah, it, they didn't win it the same way. You know, now it's just pretty much a. A bragging right you put on, you know, a piece of paper and you call it what it is. And you remember that the 2000, you know, 19, 2020 season in the coronavirus of which it was or COVID-19, as the ladies are calling it, um, you know, fucking. I mean, did they even get like a cup or some bling to put in like their trophy case? Like, I mean, and would yes. you even want it? I mean, they get the cup, they get the cup and they get their names put on it. I mean, that's the rule. That's how it works. Yeah, but it. it yeah, even though it was by default. Yeah, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. If I was, if there was a ring, I'd probably never wear it. I would just be embarrassed to wear it out in public. It's like, oh, you're wearing your, your ring, oh. huh? No, no, they, they only get cock rings. They don't get real. Okay. Yeah, yeah, cock rings only. Yeah, so you, you cock rings. They get cock rings. Yeah, no, but no one sees it, so it's 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 not as bad. You can you know you want it, but no one has to show it. You know. What I, mean? I got my ruby cock ring. Yeah, it's dipped in studs. That'd be nice. <laughs> Imagine that. That'd be nice, huh? Show up to the ladies when you're in Vegas, you know? Oh, yeah. Well, you got to get to that point in the first place. If no one's betting you, then they'll never see it. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Right? So I wish you could see the uh, backdrop I have on uh, Facebook right now. So it's the Eiffel Tower, but it's people walking back and forth and tourists taking pictures in front of the Eiffel Tower and stuff. Oh, that's cool. But um, it's not a bad – it's a different – oh, so – Funny story. No, I know how a couple of weeks ago I had the um the bar drop in the behind me, the backdrop of the bar. Mm-hmm. So our, our friend Eric Powers goes to us. He's like, oh, you've been busy during this quarantine. I go, yeah. I go, I set up the studio and everything. He's like, oh, I like that bar you built and stuff. So I started laughing. I go, yeah, it, was, it didn't take too long, you know. Oh, he stopped by? No, he thought I built a bar. He thought that back the green screen was the bar. <laughs> no, I haven't seen him. We still haven't seen him yet. We may not see him until uh, a couple more weeks, probably. Once the governor lifts this uh, stay-at-home jingy majiggy. But it'd be a good experiment, because uh, I guess in Georgia, people are pissed. Some people are kind of mixed feelings because they're going to lift it, like Monday. Yeah, I think that's very irresponsible, to be honest with you. Yeah, some people are like, um, that's terrifying, and some people are like, no, good, and like, so this is going to be a great experiment. Let's see what happens yeah. in, 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 to Georgia, you know. Yeah, they're gonna let bars open, and um, I'll send you the line, Colin. Yeah. So what I understand is the mayor of Atlanta is gonna kind of, you know, put a stop to some of that shit because, you know, what he should, you know, what I mean, even though the governor is saying you can open shit up, I think it's probably a good idea that a major city like Atlanta takes it a little bit slower, considering the fact that the governor of, of Georgia did not know that the coronavirus was transmitted through uh, air. Fucking moron. How do you not know that? Yeah. And the gov- yeah. So, there's not a lot of intelligent people. I realize that this this uh, epidemic has basically brought out 
the smart people and the stupid people. And there's a lot of stupid people out there. There really is a good amount of stupid people out there. Oh, especially in politics, because they went to a fancy school that mommy and daddy bought them in. You know? Well, and anything for that matter. You know, politics, everything in the world. I mean, I know you don't go on Facebook a lot, but if you just go on Facebook for 15 minutes, it's a good way to, you know, delete a lot of stupid people that you have to be exposed to in your life. You know what I mean? It's a very, very easy thing to do. This is basically, I mean, I'm going through Facebook and I'm, I'm, I'm deleting friends of people that I have no, uh, you know, no one I want to listen to further from their, uh, their points of views and their stupid comments and statements. You know what I mean? Yeah, people are fucking stupid. I can't. I'm, I'm done. I'm, I just want to like leave the planet. I really do. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you're in, you're in, you're more isolated than I am over the last few weeks. How's that going for you? How's that treating your mental uh, state? Um, it's gotten better. I feel like I hit like a wall, and it just I started to adapt. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it was, it was, it was when it first started. I'm like, this is like a vacation. And that was good for about a week and a half, two weeks, and I was fine. And then I was like, I'm fucking done here. Like, I'm having no interaction with anybody except on a fucking screen. And then, yeah. like, I just sort of plateaued, and, and, I be- and I kind of leveled off and became, all right, I can't fine with it. And now I'm kind of just adapting to this new lifestyle. And, yeah, I'd, I'd rather be out hiking and doing shit with people and everything, but um, coping, you know? I feel like the weeks are going by faster. Do you feel this way, or do you feel like they're going by slower? Okay, here's the thing. I was thinking about this today. I feel like the days are flying by, but the month yeah. is dragging. Okay. I, I, See, I, think- I don't know if that makes any sense, but that's how I feel. I'm like, we're still in April. I'm like, why isn't April over yet? Like, I just feel like it should be, but the days are flying. I had the opposite effect. I was I looked today and realized it was it was the 22nd. I go, holy shit, it's the fucking 22nd. I go, what that? Is it the 22nd? I don't know. What, what is it? The, uh... Yeah, the twenty second. I look. I looked at the, the freaking calendar. Go, Holy shit, April's almost over. So I, I'm. I'm just saying, like, the weeks have been flying by. I feel like working from home and like, you know, having my own kind of like rhythm and shit like this. Like, time is flying. I really have no idea of you know of time, space, what day of the week it is. Sometimes like it, the day of the week's are the hottest pot during the week because. There's nothing differential because I usually, you know, I buy a tent on Tuesdays and Thursdays. I do trivia on Wednesdays. We do the radio show on Mondays. You know, Fridays I go out to eat. So I, every week I have a, I got, you know, oh, it's Monday. Oh, it's Tuesday. I got to do this after work. Wednesday I got to do it. But when I'm not doing anything after work, the days just blend. And I literally lose track of days. I have no freaking clue sometimes what day it is until like that. You know, I got to think about it before. You know, it's not as natural. Like, oh, today's Tuesday. Today's Monday, you know? Yeah, I mean, I am. Uh, yeah, because especially since I don't work on uh, – log into your, uh, your Gmail. I'll send you that link right now. Um, so, yeah, like I – because I'm not working on Friday, like so I have like three days off, work four days. And that's great. I love that concept. But like if I have off Thursday, off Friday, off Saturday, off Sunday, you know, when I come back on Monday, I feel like I'm not up to speed mentally with my work until like 11 o'clock in the morning because I've been away from it since Thursday. Yeah, yeah. Thursday night. So I'm like, what's happening? How do I get through this? You know, and then my brain kind of kicks in. Um, yeah. Georgia, South Carolina is the way you said Maria Corona. Yeah, that's what I said. Yeah. Yeah, check that out. Um, yeah, yeah. No, I understand what you're saying. And you, you said you're getting that extra day off. So tomorrow is your Friday, essentially, right? Yeah, it is. Yeah. Let's see. Oh, yeah. I'm beyond disturbed. Yeah. It's, uh, I like the people who, you know that rally they had down the Cape this weekend where people were protesting open the state? Yeah. But they were wearing, but they were wearing masks, some of the people. <laughs> it seems a little contradictable to me. You know what I mean? If you really want to open the state, you probably shouldn't be wearing your mask. I don't the know. Is, the, more, the more this goes on, the more those crowds are going to grow. You know what I mean? Like, it's still, we, we, we still need to find a solution, obviously, but this can't keep going on forever. Like, this can't go into, into July. Like, there's no way. I mean, it has to. I mean, what else are you going to do? There's going to be riots. There's going to be mass. Like, people are going to lose their jobs. Like, I, like too many people. We're already at, what, 22 million job losses? Like, it's going to get really bad. Yeah, like, but, but here's the thing. Once, if no one's working, then no one's making any money. You know what I mean? So it's almost to a point where I mean, you got to look at it this way, too. If no one is working, then no one can get money. So there's no money flow that can be done. So it, it's not like it's just like 
not like one group of people who have no jobs. You know what I mean? Or one region of the of the country that has no jobs. You know what I mean? It's not like it's one isolated. It's fucking majority of people, right? And like in this situation, when it's the majority of people who are in the situation, the government has to do something, obviously, the best they can. But it's also no one expects, you know, you feel bad when you're the, you know, the the family. No one's working in the family, but. You know, you're not the. It's not like you're the only ones because of a real, like because you were fired from the job. You know what I mean? Because you weren't doing something right, or because they were downsizing. I mean, it's you and like you know, 30 million other people who as well. Well, I'm not. I'm not taking making a light of the note. It sucks, you know, in all counts of it and stuff like that. But it almost feels a little bit better that you know it wasn't you personally that did anything wrong, or you as a group sure. or an age or anything. It's you as a, the humans, as the race of humans. We. It, it, it well, feels no. better, but that doesn't make it not a problem. You know what I mean? Like the economy has to roll. Money has to get pouring in. There's going to be repercussions. Like people need to work. We need to keep this thing, you know, the world going, you know, and it's going to be bad. Like uh, it's just those numbers are going to grow, you know? See what happened Yeah, the other day? Oil for the first time ever traded negative. Oh, God. Which is awesome because gas prices are fucking dirt, dirt low at this point. They are, but like everything has a, when something's good, it's, everything's like a wave, you know what I mean? It affects something else somewhere else, you know what I mean? And it's, they, um, when things look good, it's just going to rebound to something bad. So here's my advice for everyone out there who, people who are still working, people who, you know, like you and my, you and both of us, is, I, I'm, we're still working, but we're both taking a little reduction. I'm not working nights, my extra job, you'll get down a couple, you're down a day, whatever like that. But we're still working, so we're still bringing income in. We're still fortunate enough to be able to still survive at this point. Um, and there's a lot of people in our situation who are either taking a little bit of a hit for an income, but we're adjusting. We're we're rebudgeting ourselves. We're taking the money. We're 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 looking at it as a whole. We're we're working. We're treating ourselves as we're we're a business, and we're trying to you know recoup and trying to extend for the long period of time until this is over. So my, my suggestion is to people who are in you know you and I situations, or even the people who are still working full time and stuff to this. You know, you're not spending money. You're not going out to restaurants and stuff. You're not, you know, buying stuff. You're not going to the mall. I feel like you're, you're really focused on running a tight ship for the most, for the majority of people. So you, you, so in, you may save a little money at the end, and then with the stimulus and all that stuff, you may get some extra cash. I'm like, so just, just look at it this way. In a few months, you know, people who, who are working and will get the stimulus and will have some extra savings, things will look brighter for you for the fall. You know, you get through those bad times, you know, you just get to it's like we're like like the governor said, we're in the third, fourth quarter of the game right now. We just got to fucking finish the game, get through this next couple of weeks or so, you know, three to four weeks. If it's four weeks, it's four weeks. It's probably going to be a couple of weeks. Who knows? I don't know. But we get through this and then, you know, you, you don't want to be like that team that, you know, is winning the entire game. Then all of a sudden the fourth quarter, the fucking other team sneaks up and fucking steals the win. Right. And fucks you over. You don't want to, we don't want to, we don't want to put all this time we invested in not going out and doing shit and kind of keeping to ourselves and following That's protocol true. just to fucking in the last week say fuck it and then we lose it all and have to do it all over again. But, but next it's week, not like it's not even like but at some point a call has to be made. And the thing is I wouldn't want to be a politician right now because then it comes how do you value a life? You look at the numbers, there's not a lot of deaths when you compare it to car accidents and all that stuff, but we don't understand this disease and that's the problem. You know? But it, it's it, there is a tip. There's a tipping point for everything. You know what I mean? There's depression, recession that you and I don't understand because we've never seen a, a, a great depression. But yeah. I can imagine it be. But there is. I wouldn't want to be the politician that makes that call. And I think politicians are more concerned about making that call because nobody wants to be remembered as that guy who you know that people think, oh, you know what? Like he's responsible for people's deaths. And then he's not going to get reelected. They're more concerned about their political careers. So they might have a hard time making that call and, and, and the economy loses even more money. You know what I mean? So who knows what's going to happen? I just oh, hope I, that. Uh, I who knows? 100%. And here's the thing, too. It's like, yeah, who, you don't want to be the person that makes that call. But That's I what think a leader has to do, though. I think, no. what's, I think what's going to happen is once we have a better knowledge of this, right? Once they know that, listen. You know, we could do the X, Y, and Z to prevent this from happening, or we could isolate, you know, X, Y, and Z type of people to keep them isolated for the time being because they're the highest. Or we have this, you know, treatment that we could give people so if you have it, it's not so bad, or some protocol. I think once we establish some kind of protocol in terms of this disease, 
I think that's when they'd be able to be a little more lenient on letting people go out and do what they need to do and live their lives like they were. I think it's the problem is we just don't really have a hundred percent. I think we're like 75% away there grasping what this actually is. And yeah, it may turn out that more people die of the flu every year than this. It may happen. I mean, car accidents or that shit. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so, which is, if that's the case, I look at it both ways. Okay. Yes. I guess we, maybe overreact a little bit, but we didn't know what this thing was. So is it a really better to overreact? Yeah. Or we look at it like, well, thank God it wasn't as bad as we thought it was going to be. And now that we have an idea and like you said, this has never happened before, right? For a hundred years when they had the Spanish flu or something similar, but they weren't in any economic times like we are now. Things are a lot different now, but Everything that's being done during this period of time is something that has never been done before. So therefore, it's it's used as a mechanism in which people can use to further the knowledge to if something of this happens again, perhaps we have a better understanding of how to approach it and how to take care of the situation before things get out of hand. And really have a good way of evaluating a, a situation and you know what worked, know what didn't work. And it's it, it, I kind of equivalent to like World War One to World War Two. So World War I happens. Nothing like that has ever happened before. Every country in the world's fighting. No one really has any idea of how to establish, you know, state of ground, how to win battles, how to do anything, right? You know, 10 years goes by. What happens? World War II. Well, World War II was a little less sloppy than World War I. I mean, people were pretty much, you know, there was a situation. Uh, and they had to develop like, an atomic bomb to win and kill even more people, though. <laughs> well... <laughs> We have to we have to develop an atomic bomb to kill this virus, essentially. You know what I mean? So if that's the way it happens, it's the way it happens. But it's only a matter of time. I mean, like I said, we've already played three quarters of this game. Don't let this go. A couple more weeks. Just sit in the home. Do what you got to do. If you're bored, there's plenty of Adi and Eric in Adi 84 of Adam shows to listen to and watch. I mean, there's over 500 episodes on iTunes if you want. So, into the cosmos and, and just sit the, back, the... relax. If you guys are that bored, you need some entertainment. Give me a call. I'll put on a little show for you. I get, I get, I get the green screen now. I'm in Paris. There's the Eiffel Tower. Look, I'm under the. Look, I'm holding the Eiffel. I'm holding the Eiffel Tower's balls. You can't see it because you can't see the Eiffel Tower. You just, no, I can't see the Eiffel Tower right now. You see me as Fenway Park right now. So I didn't see you at Fenway. Yeah. yeah. So here's the thing. Don't. I don't know. Fuck it. How's the potato going? Are you still doing that? I haven't seen any new episodes lately. Uh, Friday is it's a 13 minute episode. It's a uh, it's a Karate Kid 2 synopsis. I, I got a lot of uh, a lot of requests for it because I did three. Yeah. So, uh, a lot of people on that left comments that are so you know what? Fuck it. It's a little harder though because it's it's harder to make fun of because it's a, a superior movie than three. Yeah. So yeah. But it's okay. It'll, that'll be out Friday. Nice. Watch the potato. Go to YouTube. Type in whirlwind potato. Woo! Are you uh, bringing any more? Uh, what was the, what was the, what's the guy from uh, Blockbuster's name? Oh, Blockbuster Brett. Yeah, I, I have two scripts written for that. That'll nice. probably be hot around Halloween again. Yeah, he's going to re- He's gonna come back. Yeah. I enjoy the Brett. I enjoy his. Blockbuster uh, Brett. Yeah, yes. Blockbuster Brett. Um, I found did very you watch the one with uh, Steven, the one that I put out a couple weeks ago? Uh, I, I've watched them all. Refresh me. What happened? Well, he's uh, my AI made oh, horrible yes. movie selections. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah. The, the little. Why did you do the voices on that? By the way, I was curious. Did you just do like a voice emulator thing? No, there's an app, and basically I just put a video of the thing on there, and I add the voice in later with using another voice app. I was. I thought it was pretty funny. I was like, uh, I well, yes, I watched that last uh, last week. I watched that one actually. Yeah, I made that for me. I just thought it was fun. I knew I'm like nobody's gonna fucking watch this, but it's. It, I knew it would be fun for me to do, so I wanted to do it. Hey, it's entertaining. Um, some of the people I subscribe to, basically, one of them, uh, the track is for that matter. Their video the other day was making a microwave pizza. So, I was lucky enough for the Wicked Explorers to have enough videos back in the archives that we're still putting out new videos from our adventures from like, cause we like, we we did a lot over the the winter. So we're yeah. just still, so there's still new videos coming out that were, that doesn't involve me stuck inside the uh, studio. But what the studio is almost built completely. I um. I got a few extra items today in the mail that I got to put together. And uh, obviously the green screen's working. 
Obviously, I'm talking to you through the new Mixer board. Obviously, we're on Facebook right now. We are on. I'm Skyping you right now through the board. Um, that means when we have guests in the show, we can Skype them through the board as well. Um, the only thing I need to do now is adjust permanent lighting for the room and um, figure out how to get your video onto the uh you know, the live stream. So when we have guests that call in, we could drop their, you know, video into our video as well. Doing it live, I'm going to do it in post production, which is a piece of cake, but to get it to do it live, it's, it's even better. Right now, it's just a, right now, the picture of you on the corner of the screen is your headshot. In case you're wondering. <laughs> you mean from like seven years ago? <laughs> yeah, I'm going to take a, I'll take a screenshot of that. I know, I, I know what it is. I mean, I, 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 from like almost a decade ago. Yeah, I'm good. I just want to give a heads up to uh, Alex Wallace, who's also watching today. So, right. as always, Al- Adam, yeah, Adam, Adam Wallace, Alex Wallace, aka uh, Mikey. I just, yeah, I just texted to you because I thought it was fucking hilarious. Um, yeah. So, all right. So that concludes the show. We had a nice long show today. Uh, a little organized than usual, which is good. I feel like I'm I have a little more organized today because I have everything kind of done on the studio that I need to do. So everything's good. Where I'm at a good place right now. So I'm very excited for you to come over to experience this uh, wonderful place we have right now. So, you know, a couple of weeks, I think. So, but uh, cool. anything other than the whirlwind potato, anything going on? No, nothing. That's it. And uh, check out the uh, Wicked Explorers on YouTube. Susan and I's. Uh, traveling websites when uh featuring our little son henry who is uh almost five months old It'll be five months next next week so, wow a fucking crazy crazy you're gonna be going to college before i know it <sighs> he's doing good we're all doing good everyone out there please stay safe for the sake of god wear a mask when you go out stay safe wash your hands if you're sick stay home i don't know i fucking feel like i'm preaching to the choir but you know what to do. Just do the right thing. Don't be a fucking animal. You're a human. We're all humans. We're all in this and fucking together. We're, it's the civilization. Just don't fuck it up for people. Don't don't be stupid so we get fucking put in punishment for longer. Just don't fuck up. Right? I mean, that's all you can ask. Don't do anything stupid. Yeah. Take that one kid in class who fucking does something stupid and then all of a sudden you lose recess. You know what I mean? You don't want to do that. No. Just follow the rules. Who cares? Stay at home. If you need entertainment, give me a call. I'll fucking come over and put on a fucking show outside your window. How's that, son? Nice. Yeah. I mean, I'll bring Adam, too. And I'll stare at him and be like, hey, Adam, want to do a show with me? <laughs> all right, everyone. Watch the download YouTube, iTunes, all that good shit. We'll see you guys uh, fucking next week. Have a good one. Peace. Right, later, man. Yeah, later. Bye. Bye.